Our next speaker is the founder and CEO of RoboVision. Jonathan Berthe specialized in artificial neurons and deep learning algorithms. RoboVision has built an engine that uses artificial intelligence in fields as varied as manufacturing, media, security, and agriculture. RoboVision says that it wants to embrace the paradigm shift of the current era's new oil, and that new oil is data. Jonathan Berthe. <laughs> This is huge. <laughs> okay, I'm Jonathan Bertie, and today I want to tell you about my dream. And my dream is to understand how we think. It is to understand the true nature of intelligence. And we're, really, we're living through a disruption right now. We're living through the deep learning revolution. I want to explain you what deep learning is, why it's so different from other breeds of AI, and how, what it means for business, how new business models arise from it. And this, the story starts when I was a young man. When I was a young man, I was reading books about how the mind worked, how different fields have to cooperate and bring together a foundation of true knowledge. I mean books like Gerd Lescherbach, Douglas Hofstetter, Roger Penrose, Shadows of the Mind. And the start, my dream started to materialize when I was in 1999 at the Institute of Neuroinformatics in Zurich. And at the Institute of Neuroinformatics, biologists, neurologists, but also informaticians and physicists and mathematicians started to cooperate and try to understand how the human brain works. And unknowingly, they were lying, laying the foundation for the deep learning revolution. They started thinking around and analyzing how our brain processes data. And they started integrating these ideas into artificial neural networks. Because if you look at this image, this is an image of a young boy, it is for a normal computer, for uh, yeah, an old-style computer, let's say, it is just an array of pixels. It doesn't mean anything. But for us, it's a network of semantic relationships. Now, 72% of the data on the internet is exactly this kind of data. It's videos, pictures of birthday parties, of family pictures, of touristic settings. And until now, computers have had a really hard time to understand what they see. But this is radically changing. This is changing because we're stepping away of the old-style computation paradigm. And the old-style computation paradigm is the idea of the microprocessor doing a sequential instruction set. And the software engineer engineering this part of sequential logic. That's man-made intelligence. That's old-style AI. In 2007, a lady called Fei Fei Li started with a moonshot. She decided to create a huge mapping between millions of images of birthday parties, touristic images, images of our loved ones, and started to map them. She asked thousands of people at Amazon Turk to start labeling them. And she fed this data, this huge trove of data, to this stack of artificial neurons. Neurons that look like a biological neuron, but are not the same because they live inside a computer. And while doing that, she didn't know what the outcome would be, but the outcome was spectacular. The network had learned. It had learned intuitive knowledge, and many people here in the audience have this kind of reception-like discussions, especially people with a technical background. 
And me too, at Christmas parties, people were always inquiring me, like, will computers ever be smarter than humans? And until some years ago, I had to say no. No, because a system can never be smarter than its engineer. But this rule has been broken, just as the loss more has been broken. Moore's law. And this is the advent of the deep learning revolution. Because if we look at the nature of computation, it is in biological entities, it's always a huge, in huge parallel ways. You have data falling into our eyeball, processed by these first ganglion layers, and all the way up into the back of our brain. And while the image is passed from one layer to another, it is new concepts arise. Like in the beginning, just behind our eye, it are borders, black and white. And a bit later, it starts to get shapes, like round, square. And in the end of our brain, we really recognize our grandmother. And that's a paradigm which is fairly new to apply to the industry. Because in the industry, we really like to have definitive facts and predictability. And because of Fei Fei Li, we actually are now living through this, this disruption called deep learning, and we are using new kind of computational devices. GPUs. Until not so long ago, they were used to, to play games and to, yeah, to, do, uh, to make AutoCAD designs. But with the advent of the pioneers of deep learning, called Andrew and G and so on, they decided to reuse these GPUs, these graphical engines, and come up with schemes how to... Can somebody go to the next slide because it's not working? <laughs> it's always the same with this. Ah, yeah, okay. And these, uh, these methods called gradient descent within the GPU are are actually creating the algorithms themselves. So if you look at the picture to the left, if you feed thousands of pictures of cats and dogs to a huge stack of neural networks, and you actually get intelligence emerging from it. And that's a very powerful idea, because we no longer have to create intelligence our own. It's created for us. It's just like in the Middle Ages, a perpetuum mobile and the only thing we need to do is pay the electricity bill and invest in deep learning servers. So that's the true nature of this revolution, that it's, it's really a gap between old-style AI and the self-learning, which has come to a new level. Now, in our business model, we had a problem with scalability. We were always doing image processing in very difficult projects, and we had to assign a lot of smart people on them. So we could not parallelize these tracks. And the fact is that while doing all these projects, we learned a lot. We learned from projects like Porsche, from biotechnology, from ACFA. And we learned that at some point we will be bottlenecked. And that's when we started to really look at the deep learning in 2014 and create an engine for it that is now worldwide being used for the plant industry, agriculture. And these machines are used in Brazil, Japan, in San Francisco, Canada, everywhere in the world. People without knowledge of any technical background are using it to teach in new plants. And at a certain point, we started building in new features, new ways of easing the process of learning in a new plant. And one particular feature was being corrupted by our clients. They started to reuse the export function, the export model function, and sell it to each other. So they started trading USB sticks. And at that point in time, we realized that we lost the control of the system. So we started to build our own AI store, just as in the mobile revolution, the App Store, the Apple App Store, was created as a consolidation of a disruption. And now, different companies are soon able to trade models from an AI store. And having built this successful ecosystem worldwide was a perfect lesson 
and a perfect template to apply it to other industries. And we had to solve some issues in the meanwhile because we needed a lot of label data. And while creating these labels, you need a lot of people involved. So we decided to design an Android platform and to let people from all over the world label the data so they can be in connection with a farmer in Canada or a farmer in Japan. And in, so, in doing so, we're discussing with UNHCR how to leverage the power of all these smart people in refugee camps like Jordania and to bring people together apart from the nation state. Because that is my true driver in life, it's to kill the nation state. So, <laughs> uh, and having this model, one of the most important backbones in humanity is the silicon backbone. All gadgets that are made in companies like Foxconn and other um, institutes and companies are ac actually having problems by building their devices. All these devices consist of tiny little solderings which can create instabilities in our device when we use it or when we try to call our loved ones. So we apply deep learning in the same way with the same networks that we apply in agriculture to this backbone. And we were very successful. We were in contact with the biggest companies on Earth building our electronic devices, and we could disrupt them. Also, when I was at a medical fair a couple of months ago in Amsterdam, I came into contact with the top people of the NIH, National Institutes of Health in America. And we applied the ecosystem that we uh, built out in agriculture and applied it to medical data. So right now, the NIH is working with a platform which was basically made in agriculture to process petabytes of data within the public hospitals and creating a better world. Because if we can democratize expertise in the same way that we have democratized knowledge with the internet, we can build a better healthcare system for the world. And where to start else than in the United States, where the healthcare system is so under pressure. We want to become the SAP of AI. Thank you very much.